Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the morning wood. I am so glad you could jump up on my wood. It's going to be a throbbing, pounding, climactic show. Probably not since I'm old and fat and barely can get a heart on. But anyways, this is Thursday. This is going to be a good day. Tomorrow is uh, Friday. <laughs> I'm just announcing days. Uh, we got tomorrow we have, uh, who do we have tomorrow? I forgot. We've got people, Raisin Girl, Luna, Gage, and other folks will be joining us tomorrow for Fan Friday. Uh, other than that, um, as you can tell, my room is still not ready. I, just, I don't have everything going. I'm still working on the system. I will be having OBS. I mean, I got my OBS, and I'm working on it and everything. I will be moving to Twitch soon. Um, the, I'll be moving this show to Twitch because fuck YouTube and the anal area. And uh, other than that, as always, at the end of the show, you can ask questions. Um, just don't make them completely retarded, and we'll answer them. And you can tip off through the show, and I will read your message at the end. We've got a stream go today of, let's just make it little, $35 stream go, small stream go. And uh, so we're probably going to end about a half hour early today because i got a lot of shit to take care of. Anyways, on to the shoe. Uh, we're joined today by my very good buddy, awesome man himself. Ad friendly as fuck, D. What's happening? Uh, we, I guess that's all I have to say. Things are going good, even better now that our friendly neighborhood astronomer has just shown up. Yeah. Hello. There Hello. you go. And we're also joined by very awesome, very talented, very wonderful YouTuber. Well, we couldn't get him, so we got Magog. Hey, Magog. What's up? What's up? How you doing, buddy? And uh, of course, the the late Landon, though. <laughs> it's, yes, yes, late, late in more than one uh, uh, way. But uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon your time zone and latitude. Uh, hello there, great pet monk, and of course, highest respects to Magog, who is in the process of conquering us at some point. Yes, yes, I will. I will eventually conquer all of you. Conquer you. So. <laughs> Does, does Magog deal with things like the Geneva Convention, or or does is that like beneath Magog? Oh yeah, that's the thing I'm going to burn down. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things I'm going to burn down. I'm not gonna lie, I plan on doing a lot of arson. Oh, <laughs> my favorite pastime next to killing hookers. <laughs> How many hookers have you killed? 47. 47. Allegedly. 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 We do we not say allegedly. Murder. Not allegedly. I fucking killed him. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this realm, you say allegedly, and that way the YouTube lawyers don't uh, get too twitchy. In, in, my realm, Mark, in, in, in my realm, it's commonplace because they're not people <laughs> like you and me. It's exactly. <laughs> I agree. I agree. In Mississippi, nobody's people but white folks. Ooh. Ooh. Allegedly. Ooh. That's, not, that's, not, that's not necessarily the case anymore, I don't think. But, no, uh, it's not. Mississippi is very progressive. We accept Mexicans. <laughs> you know, here, here, in, here in Arkansas, we have a high population of Vietnamese, believe it or not. Yeah, actually, you do. I've heard about that. I've read about that. Yeah. And my was, sister uh, lives in Arkansas. She's talking to me about that. Yeah, a lot of the refugees from Vietnam that our country accepted from Vietnam uh, came and settled in Arkansas. Yeah. yeah there's well, a lot. Of, I mean, look, of course, the history of the South, we all know the history. Of the, but there's a lot of common misconceptions about the South, too. Like, people, don't, when they think about Mississippi, they, they always talk about Mississippi burning, shit like that. They don't talk about our big Mexican population where we're kind of known for our Mexican food. Mississippi is big on Mexican food. Oh yeah, I mean, Arkansas yeah, too, but not as yeah. big. Yeah, yeah. That's like, the only yeah, reason you let them in, wasn't it? You're just like, we yeah. want our carne asada burrito. <laughs> Fuck it, civil <laughs> rights is okay now. But you can go to Jackson, and, and there's tamale stands every fucking where in Jackson. Tamales are awesome, by the way. Uh, hold up a second. Yeah, I, I, I just I just imagine people in Mississippi are like blacks. We don't like them. Jews they <laughs> rule everything. We don't like them. Get them out, Miss. What about Mexicans? Now, now, wait a minute. Don't you touch my chimichangas? <laughs> don't don't, don't fuck touch my goddamn <laughs> chimichangas. You know we fuck with my chimichangas. And Mississippi is chimichanga. 
that's the actual pronunciation, but I was doing a redneck uh, thing. Let's yeah. see, it's chimichanga. <laughs> but no, it, it is the actual, but if you do chinga, it doesn't sound right. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's it's really weird. All of South Arkansas, um, if you're driving through certain highways, they just run along all the uh all the rice rice fields. Yeah. Uh, we're the biggest rice producing state in well, we're the only rice producing state in in oh, all yeah. of all of America. And so it's so weird. You drive through parts of South South Arkansas and you're driving down the highway and you just look over and there's people with those fucking, you know, Vietnamese hats, those big basket hats, and they're out in the field yeah. fucking picking rice. And you're like, I just tr just got transported to fucking Vietnam all of a sudden. <laughs> like they yeah, my dad. grow a shit ton of rice. Forty percent of the rice in, in America comes from Arkansas. Arkansas I'll send my dad. Rice. I'll Damn. send my dad there to have a flashback. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, oh, the, God, the, literally, funny. literally, we have a joke around here that 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 actually is true. Like a lot of people use the joke throughout the United States because it's funny, but here in Arkansas, it is true. And that is, this is an Arkansas piece of advice: never take a Vietnam vet to a fireworks display in the swamp. <laughs> there you go, dude. <laughs> that's pretty fucking good advice. That is really good advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was looking on rice production. Um, Arkansas is first, and California is second. Yeah, California uh, has good, good, humid weather in certain parts of California for for yeah. rice growth. And, well, it's it's the, the there, and then of course Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, and Texas, and that's Mississippi oh, yeah. has a rice. Thing? I didn't know that. Yes. Yep. yep. We're the yep. we're the but we're, we're the rice state. I mean, it's literally the mm. rice plant is on our quarter. You know how like every state has a quarter now. Yeah. You know how they did the whole fifty quarters. You know, mm -hmm. over over the years, ours yeah. literally has rice patties. <laughs> um, now we yeah, used to be a uh, cotton state, but now we're catfish. Our number one uh, trade is catfish around here. That's, oh, that's yeah, cat, have, catfish meat. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, dude. This fucking. Have you ever been to a farm? They're fucking awesome. I love going to a catfish farm. They're oh, pretty yeah. cool. No, we we have trout farms here. That's that's a big thing. Yeah, we love trout fishing. We got the Arkansas River. We got Mississippi River. You know, yeah. we got the White River and the Red River. You know, we're we're big on hunting and fishing. I mean, this is the natural. Y'all like right? rivers, don't you, man? Oh yeah, we got man. Ar that's what makes it so good at fucking growing rice, man. We, we uh, Arkansas some, yeah. is nothing but river river soil. You know, there's some pretty uh, nice places in Arkansas to visit to. Um, a few years back, I went and uh, there was this old girl I was fucking. <laughs> who her her family was in Arkansas. And I went up there. Some nice areas out there. Yeah, nice there's a there, there's a new place that's opened up in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, up in the mountains, up in the Ozarks. That uh, these people they built they build unique hotel getaways. I, I don't want to call them a hotel, but they're like cabins. You know how you can like rent a, a romantic cabin with your partner or whatever. These yeah. fucking places these people built, they just opened up. Man, the waiting list on some of these fucking rooms are like a year long. Like are they they've like got themed? a little Yeah, like they got a hobbit hole. Oh. You know, they got with the round door and everything. They got one that's like built into a cave, like the fucking bedroom is inside of a fucking cave and there's like a waterfall inside of it and shit. They got a tree house cabin. You know, they got all these like themed cabins, I guess. You but did they have a Magog cabin yet? Yeah, they got a fucking castle, man. Yeah, Seriously, they, they built a little castle. <laughs> it's got like a suit of armor in the corner and shit. Mm, that's cool. That that fucking up. awesome shit right there. Yeah, yeah, I've been to. I went to this hotel one time that was very space themed, and it was like really weird. Uh, it was like cheap hotel that was trying to do something, and it was very bad. <laughs> it really? was horrible. We got a haunted hotel in Arkansas. It's one of the most haunted hotels in all of America. And it's the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs. It's built on yes. the top of the mountain. I've heard that of fucking it. place. I've stayed at that place. That fucking place is old and creepy. Is it creepy? Like, I don't know if it's haunted. I didn't see no ghosts, but I know they yeah. got them they got them long hallways like in the shining. Like I was walking to my room and I'm like, if I turn this corner and there's two little girls, <laughs> I'm gonna You're freak rolling. the fuck out. Like they got that old like 1920s Art Deco like red carpet, you know, <laughs> like yeah. in the hallways. Oh, yeah. It was like that's it's what creepy, I understand. Dude. That's what I understand about these people who say they live in haunted houses. Look, I'm a skeptic. I don't believe in this shit. But if I seen a ghost, I wouldn't move. Plain and fucking said, so there's no way I'm staying in a goddamn house. 
Well, there's dead people floating around. Uh -uh. Oh, wait a minute. What's what's all this mean? Uh, these these, of course, they, they don't exist. But but if they did, why do you why do you assume that a ghost is bad? I mean, maybe I like don't care if they're bad. Maybe they're dead. Like, maybe it's the, alive. That's some well, fucking hardcore prejudice, dude. I mean, I'm yeah. sort of disappointed in you that you would Fuck like you. I'm a ghost judge all ghosts beforehand. You know, before Fuck meeting reason. one, we need to build a wall. <laughs> 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 they go through walls, dude. What are you gonna do about that? I, I'm a I'm a skeptic too. I, I really am. I'm, I'm I'm a skeptic, but I do believe that there's a lot of shit in this world that we can't explain. Oh yeah, uh, not yet. And I tell you I mean, what, Donald Trump becoming president is one of them. I, I don't I don't have any of those stupid stories, you know, those urban legend stories yeah. from when you're a kid and you played with a Ouija board and yeah. got all freaked it's out. And scary. you know, people everybody has those fucking stories. Yeah. But I swear to God, this one time me and my buddy Jeff were driving through the country in his old 79 T Bird. We were just cruising, man. That's what we did when we were kids. We just fix up old cars and go cruising, you know. It was the middle of the fucking night on this dark country road here in Arkansas. And we saw this girl walking down the fucking road, and we passed her, right? Because she it happened so fast. I mean, like, we were driving, and there she was, and we fucking were going pretty fast. So we, we passed her, and then my buddy hit the brakes, and he's like, maybe she needs some help or something. So we, we fucking hit the brakes, was all like, mm. we turned around. She was gone. Hmm. It was a fucking country road cutting through swamp. Where the fuck did she go? She Why dove into the swamp. Dude, maybe she, she dove into she, the fucking she, water like she had like, of, I didn't get raped. Oh, come on. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, at the same yeah. time, man, we, we backed the car up and got out and we looking and shit. We're like, hello? Like, do you need help? We're like, call it out. Cause, you know, like she was gone. Uh, <laughs> like, we didn't see nothing. Yeah, my dad swears he's seen. Uh, he was, he, he's from Arkansas. He lived in Arkansas. And he swears he's seen something. I can't remember what he was. It was some kind of dude. What it was, he was driving. He picked him up. It was because he he just moved back to Arkansas. He picked his friend up. No, my dad was walking, and the friend picked him up. They was driving around and talking, and then he dropped my dad off at the house. And then my dad walks in the house and said, "Guess who just picked me up?" And he said the dude's name. They said that is impossible. Said, Why is it? Because he had a car wreck three months ago and died. Oh yeah, yeah. My dad swears that. I, I think my dad was on PCP. They could have been drugs, dude. I think drugs explains a lot, you know, in these kinds yeah. of situations. Yeah, because uh, I don't believe in it. There's a lot of weird shit, like people people who've uh, who survived exorcisms and stuff, and and like, you know, our brains are weird, man. Like like these yeah. fucking people that were supposedly possessed or whatever, man. They speaking in fucking like speaking languages and shit, and you're like. They never mm -hmm. learned that language. How the fuck mm -hmm. can they speak it? You know, like that actually happens. There was a case, of, a case of that. I, I like reading weird medical cases, and yeah. there was a case of that in like France or something where this this girl got hit over the head, yeah, like she was in an accident. And when she come to, she was speaking like Spanish and Portuguese yeah. and shit, and nobody had ever taught her that. Like her brain just like clicked over. You know, like That's true. Like all I read the that. World, I, I, yeah, I read all that. the world know. languages are stored in our subconscious or something. <laughs> I mean, I That's don't. Weird. Yeah, I, I did read that article. I don't. I I thought it was bullshit, but a lot, you know, whatever. Yep. What was that? What was that guy's name? Phineas Jones. Was, that was his name, right? Phineas. Are you talking about Phineas Gage? Gage. That's it. Yeah, the guy who got yeah. the railroad spike through his yeah, his, his head. Yeah, that's one of those. That's one of those weird medical cases. Fascinating shit, man. He got that railroad spike through his head and lived, and went through his yeah. front, like frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. And even though he lived, it like completely changed his personality. <laughs> like you know, he had he, his wife was all like, "Well, he survived. I'm so happy my husband's alive." And then he he started fucking doing crazy shit in town. I would imagine he had a fucking railroad spike. <laughs> The, the way that it was explained to me, because I, I heard that story in like a psych 101 class in community college, uh, and they were saying that because he severed like two, like a connection between two different like spheres of his brain, that it basically made him like an impulsive child, right? Like, what is it? The medial prefrontal cortex or whatever it is that right. is responsible for like logic and like, you know, controlling your emotions or whatever, uh, like that was just gone for him. He he couldn't. Yeah. He was basically a child at that point. Right. Mm -hmm. But he would have he would have moments of lucidity where he was his normal self and then and then he'd wake up one day and just be like 
blah, you know, <laughs> you know, shit like that happens, man. It's weird. People have had brain surgeries, have an entire like left half of their brain oh. removed and the right half of the brain can like fucking take over and they have to learn how to talk and everything again, but they fucking live. It's weird. Yeah, head trauma can do some weird shit, man. It really can. There was this one guy I read a long time ago that he, uh, I don't know what happened, but he got hurt. I think it was a football game or something. And he went back into like his uh, child days and he was, and everything he talked and said was like he was 10 years old. And it was really weird. So, yeah. Yep. Head traumas can do some weird shit. Oh, he yeah, can do yeah. some weird shit. I'm always doing weird shit, dude. Yeah, yes, you are, because you're <laughs> weird. Um, well, I had an article pulled up, but I lost it. Oh, uh, fuck it. Anyways, <laughs> uh, anyways, how, how was your how's your week been, my gog? Oh, uh, pretty pretty uneventful. Don't get me wrong. I've been I've been paying attention to the news. I've done a couple streams. I've got mm -hmm. a new format that I'm going to be trying out with my show. Uh, shorter videos, but more often. Instead of once a week, I'm going to be doing multiple shorter videos. And I'm trying wow. to kind of, I'm trying to kind of shift towards more doing just comedy and reacting yeah. to other things besides mm -hmm. the politics and stuff. Because I, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of dying. The, you know, just constantly talking about SJWs and feminists and stuff. I'm oh, running out of fucking. I'm running out of fucking oh. material here. I, I told mean, Landon you, this you, the other day. You've 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 done a you know a really good job of 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 the you know capitalizing your current stuff, but but jokes you know run their course, and absolutely I'm sure I'm sure you're creative enough to pick up you know more things. That's why I keep watching you. Yeah, mm. yeah, I, I just did one actually. I did I I wanted to try it out, so I did one of these shorter videos, my last video, and I, you know, and I did it on like a feminist stripper, so I guess it was still kind of political, but at the same time, I made it more funny. Yeah. I made it more, it wasn't, it wasn't so much just like angry and evil necromancer angry at our world. I made it more mm -hmm. funny and responsive. And then of course I had Medusa come in at the end, <laughs> topless, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, <laughs> as man. kind of like a fucking joke where Magog's like, I'm trying to figure out how to make my videos better. Get out of here. And she's like, oh, <laughs> you know, like and it, was a, it was at that point in the video. I was like, <laughs> God damn you, YouTube for making people censor shit. Like, yeah, right. oh, fucking pixelated. I can't see shit. <laughs> fucking angry. Um, <laughs> she's cool, too. I like her. Yeah. She's coming She's coming back on the show next week, I do believe. Um, yeah. Uh, anyways, I got this little story I want to read. It's quick. Officials blame rats for drinking seized alcohol in India. The, Easter, the eastern Indian state of ba Bihar is alcohol-free as officials have been Seizing drinks and storing it away. It's been vanishing. Rats have been gnawing at cans and bottle tops, drinking the alcohol inside, according to the local officials. So got so, a bunch of drunk rats and sober people. That's a good <laughs> combination there. I don't understand. Yeah. They, well, were, hey. they were storing the alcohol somewhere so people wouldn't drink it? Yeah, they're taking the alcohol away from everybody in that area for some reason. They, oh, that's they're not going to work. Prohibition, yeah, prohibition. man. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it it's been proven to work uh, uh, everywhere. You know, prohibition works, man. But I think oh, drunk man. rats and 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 drunk people—that's sort of the definition of the British Navy, isn't it? <laughs> See, I, I have a, I have what is this a hypothesis? You are completely wrong, sir. Their ships are <laughs> drunk too. There is there is a, there is a positive correlation between um, the prohibition of alcohol and the number of people. Mm -hmm in the world fermenting their own shit. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. that's a bad thing. That always leads to like, that's how literally the Italian mafia gained power in America was because of prohibition. Like they were just making their own whiskey, bootleg and fucking Capone made all his money on bootleg whiskey. Well, I, uh, I mean, I mean literal shit though, not like a colloquial shit, like things and stuff. I mean, actual fecal matter. Like they're fermenting their own shit. Yeah, pe people do desperate things when you make it <laughs> illegal. They, they just yeah, gotta like, get high, man. They just want to change their conscious state. They can't yeah. do it with booze. They'll do it with their shit. But I'm not gonna well, be I mean, trying to get high on my turds. That's fucked up. In, inmates uh, in Australia got so desperate that they were uh, using Vegemite, which is fermented yeast, to try to make alcohol in, inside the prisons because they 
they were trying to uh, cut down, the, the prison officials were trying to, and, and I believe, I don't know if it was New South Wales or Victoria, where they were trying to cut down on supposedly prison riots and so forth. And so one of their things was ban alcohol. And the uh, clever oddities were even using, you know, Vegemite to try to reduce it to yeast. You know, yeast. there's a silver lining to everything, though. Because mm -hmm. if it yep. wasn't for prohibition, we wouldn't have got NASCAR. Ah. Yes. I mean, that's you, true. you guys, you guys know true. that, right? You guys know no, that, No, no, right? absolutely. Yeah, that's how Yes, absolutely. NASCAR absolutely. was started by bootleggers. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, they would fix up their cars to outrun the police. And they were like, this is kind of fun. Like, we should do this for a sport. <laughs> we should do this more. Hey, let's go drive in a circle when we're not running booze across the oh, Mississippi fucking I state see. line. See, now I'm from the South and stuff, but I'm one of the few people from the South who absolutely despises NASCAR. Um, I don't, I don't I can, watch it, but I, I see the... Meow, meow, meow. What the Dude, fuck? They took, just... they took away the only thing that had appeal, and that was the grid girls. No, na na NASCAR never had those. <laughs> Grid Girls was Formula. No, the uh, Grid Girls was Formula One thing in Europe. Yeah. So wait, yeah, dude, no, does NASCAR that, have their own their own fucking hot ladies? Because you know, yeah, oh, of course they do. Isn't a sport unless yeah. you can objectify. No, they, well, they, they, NASCAR does not bend to SJW bullshit. Like no. seriously, they they when people were complaining about the Bud Light girls and the Monster Energy drink girls that would like stand next yeah. to the car after the racer would win, you know, and the racer would come out and drink a monster as promotion or whatever. This. Them beautiful girls standing back there. And when anybody complained, NASCAR was like, fuck you. They Good. doubled down. <laughs> they, they would Good. double down to get more girls. <laughs> yeah. I have more, I have more respect for NASCAR now. Cause I totally got that. that well, you, wrong. Do, you do know that NASCAR is the biggest spectator sport in America. It's actually, I mean, it, it's, it's actually bigger than football. Yeah, as I mean, uh, uh, yeah, people, people wise, ticket sales wise. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong, though. NASCAR is the biggest spectator sport, but the uh, the Super Bowl is the most watched sports oh, game. Uh, yeah, Super in Bowl all of America, football. period. Not, yeah, like, not football, <laughs> I actually get to go to my very first. I'm a Packers fan, right? Hardcore my whole life. I've been a Packers Goddamn fan. Goddamn cheesehead. I never, I've never gotten to go to a, to a game at Lambeau Field, but next month for my birthday, I'm getting to go to Green Bay and getting to go to a, to a game at Lambeau Field and stuff. So I'm really excited about that. Yes, and that's, uh, sort of, that's a big thing for. Yeah, it's one of my bucket list items. And uh, so I'm getting to go to Lambeau Field. Yeah, just, just once I personally would like to go to a Super Bowl. Yeah, oh god but the yeah. tickets are just god awful fuck and you have to get them like a year in advance some yeah. of them you can't even get a year in advance some of them you're yeah. just like yeah. oh man I gotta, are, I gotta wait i gotta wait silicon five valley, years the big silicon valley events i, I attend is done by uh, some people from the electronic frontier foundation we um we purposely have a party where we ask people to come and bring stuff and help help fund the party and then mm -hmm. we say we're going to watch the super bowl we actually record the Super Bowl uh, on a computer and we go off and do a hike while the Super Bowl is going on. We come back and, and through computer algorithms, we skip over the game and just watch the commercials. So we basically oh, we record stupid, it and, do, and, and deliberately do a public thing to dare the NFL to come and sue us because they know they're going to lose when they say, hey, this is probably the only blah, 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 you know, that, that, that BS thing. And essentially we do that every time. And and all we're interested in, so we ignore the game and just watch the watch the commercials in halftime. I mean, you can tell who won at the end, but you know, like you, but you know, it's, it's a matter of it, it, it's, it's, it's 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 a defying this notion that they broadcast it and we can't uh, use it. So. Well, I get that part, but not watching the game is fucked up, Landon. Well, I mean, you 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 be because what the NFL says is if you record their stuff. Then you'll skip the commercials that they're 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 trying yeah. to promote and just watch the game. Or we do the opposite, right? To make it even harder for them to sue us. It's just a mess yeah. with, with mess with. Yeah, mess the, with the one I thing know, I, 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 I knew we got, you can watch the. I mean, actually, you can sort of tell when someone you know wins or does a touchdown stuff because you can see it. It flies by like you're skipping over a commercial. We skip over the game because yeah. usually the it's commercials. All the but the commercials is what big a big part of the Super Bowl now. I mean, I I, I catch myself waiting for the which is going to be the most exciting or most controversial commercial this year. 
Yeah. I, I guess was if waiting. Yeah, for there's that. there's a whole culture about that right now. But you know what's funny about the Super Bowl is it's actually watched around the world too. Like you'd be surprised yeah. when I was a, when I was stationed in England in in the Air Force, um, the BBC would actually air the Super Bowl. They had the rights mm-hmm. to do it, and of course yeah. it'd be in the middle of the night because of the time difference. You know, six hours ahead of us. Yeah. Here at Central Time, uh, England is six hours ahead of Central Time. And uh, man, I'd stay up. We'd st- our, our we'd stay up late and watch the fucking Super Bowl on BBC, and the English announcers were like, "I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't understand this game." <laughs> like, <laughs> but they aired it though because there was still people even around the world that fucking watched the Super Bowl. They have no idea who the teams are. They don't know what's going on, but they fucking air it. Well, you know, so now they're wild. actually hosting games in the UK. Uh, they're they're going over there. The, 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 there's teams that go over there and play a game each season over there. Uh, yeah, they're trying I, to push it. Over. I don't th- I don't think our our football is going to ever become. They want it to become like soccer. It's not going to happen. No, no, soccer's the worldwide sport. I mean, honestly, yeah. and it always yeah. will be. I mean, baseball's big in Japan. Yeah, and, ba- and certain areas America. basketball. Well, certain areas basketball is really huge, and football. But you know, it's never soccer is going to be the big dog forever, right? Pretty much, um, except here in America, we don't really give a shit about. It. I, I used to get into fights with the English civilians I worked with. Man, they they used to think that, oh, you know, your Americans are fucking pussies because you know we play rugby and it's a rugby, it's kind of like yeah. football, and they're like, but we don't wear pads, and I'm like. Have you ever seen our football players? Trust me, you want to be wearing some sort of armor. Exactly. I try. To, I say the same thing, and, and all the rugby guys will be like, you, you just pushies. And no, dude, our football guys look like monsters. If they hit you without pads, you're going to die. You want to you wanna, you wanna sit there and play. Like I can guarantee you, if you could teach some American football players rugby and have them face off with some English rugby players, mm-hmm. even if England wins, them guys would come off the field going, that hurt a that lot. Hurt a lot. <laughs> Make it that happen. Hurt. That 400-pound lineman, that 400-pound black dude just slammed my face. It really hurt. <laughs> like, How about honestly- this? <laughs> whoever wins the next Super Bowl, I think that we should pit them against like whoever the rugby champions are, and we will make them not wear pads, and we will see who, who fares the best. That'll Honestly, be the true it's, test. It's, yeah, it's kind of like comparing checkers and chess. I mean, they're yeah. they're similar games, like they use a similar board, but way different rules. And yeah. they they don't wear pads because they don't actually hit each other. Mm-hmm. Like they don't go they don't go running and then fly into each other like in football. They push each other. It's push. It's 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 like it's like pass blocking. It's like constantly pass blocking, right? And then they don't have downs. They just keep moving. They're just like, they toss the ball to each other. And it's just, it keeps going and going and going. And it's like like soccer football, basically. Yeah, that is, that is a completely different game. If you, if you grab some rugby players, put them in some pads and a helmet and then put them on a football field, they're probably going to be like, well, I got to wear all this shit. This is so stupid. And then they get hit the first time. They're going to be like, holy (laughs) shit. (laughs) <laughs> and I think, I think football is like a way more strategic sport than rugby too, as well. It is. It's about. It's about. Out. You know. It is. It's. It's. It's about. Uh, you know, choosing the right play and 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 out maneuvering the opponent, the defense. You know. Yeah. To get down the field, and where rugby is, they blow the whistle and they just fucking go until somebody scores. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, and they're, and they're tough as fuck. Don't tell you, we're no, not taking that away from them. Some tough no, boys. No, they're tough, 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 they they all and they don't play with pads, so they get fucked up. They got oh, like yeah. most rugby players got like cloved ears, you yeah, know, like, and shit like, like fighters. You know, like, yeah, yeah, like, like fighters and shit, man. Yeah. They're missing teeth. Look at Vinny Jones, the actor. Yeah. He, he he played rugby for years. That oh yeah. Got, that dude's got like a fucking, you know, beat up face. <laughs> you know, like he's a scary looking motherfucker. But people yeah. always want to compare up. But like you said, though, that, I'm glad you said that because that's like boxing and MMA. Yeah, it's similar, but it's a different fucking game. Like when yeah. Conor McGregor fought a uh, uh, dumbass, I can't think of his name. Uh, whatever his name, Mayweather. When he fought Mayweather, yeah. you know, it, it was a, it, yeah, of course he lost. It's a different fucking game. Yeah, Con- Conor McGregor is, is a decent striker, but yeah. you put glove, you know, you put boxing gloves on him and pit him against somebody like Mayweather, who is yeah. a endurance fighter. 
Yes, right. Exactly. He, he sits there and he yeah. dips and he's like Ali, you know, he'll dip and dodge and dip, dip, dip and dodge, dodge, dodge and wear you the fuck out. And yeah. then come like the ninth round, just knock your fucking ass to the wall. That's yeah. how he fights. But you put Mayweather in an MMA. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. In an octagon and Conor McGregor gets a hold of his legs. He just done. Him. <laughs> Too hey, fucking it, yeah. Done. Yeah. That is, yeah. you're fucking done, son. You're, so you're an MMA fighter. Like, he's fan? breaking my knees. Get him off me. <laughs> so off so me. you are an MMA fan. <laughs> what? Are you, you are an MMA fan? I'm both. I'm, what I was going to ask. What I was going to ask. What do you yeah. think about the, the Khabib or McGregor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that big a fan. I I, I um, like watching the fights, but I don't get into the stats and the names and stuff. I I uh, watch it. I watch it for strategy. I, I don't really pay. Yeah. I, I'm not like heavy into it. Like I don't okay. even know the names of a lot of fighters. I know a lot of the famous oh. ones, but yeah. it's more yeah. like a it's more like a casual sport. Like how some people just watch soccer. They just have it up on the screen. Yeah, because I'm a sports well, guy. It doesn't matter yeah. what sport it is. Even if I don't really uh, like, I'm not into baseball, but I'll put a baseball game on. Oh, yeah, exactly. I, don't, I don't follow yeah. the team or nothing, but I like sports. Baseball is almost as bad as golf to watch on TV. It is, it is hard to watch. Golf is the worst. It's hard to watch. Baseball is hard to watch. <laughs> now, but now, I don't going to say, if, if you ask me to choose between boxing and MMA, which I like more, I've always been a fan, more of a fan of good old fashioned pugilism. You know, I'm a, I'm a boxing fan more. Yeah, than well, I used to be a hardcore boxing fan, but the sport has become so corrupt. That it's well, it's been that way watch. for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, all, it's, all, yeah. it's a massive show and really, really corrupt yeah. and a lot of money, uh, you know, and money's in it and everything. And they, yeah, they make a big presentation and everything. But yeah. yeah, that's why I watch a lot of underground now, fighting. Now, what I was going to say, well, I brought up the, the uh, Conor McGregor's next fight is against a dude named Khabib. And it's uh, they're ca calling this the biggest MMA fight in history. Uh, because it, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but Connor, you know, he had a lot of legal issues because he threw a took a pick up a stool and threw it at a bus and yeah. broke. The, well, it was this guy he was after. It was this guy. So this and so it's 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 become a big deal. I think McGregor's going to kick his ass, but a lot of people think Khabib because Khabib is undefeated. He's like twenty six and zero. And so it, it's, it's, uh, and I really like the press conference because Khabib is a Muslim and, uh, and, uh, McGregor was making fun of him. He was going, he was, he was just really going at it, making fun of it. And, uh, He's also not my Lego Kappa Baba, and uh, it, it was I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> yeah. That's so yeah. fucked up, dude. I, I was I was gonna ask you like what his race was. I was like Khabib. Yeah. Oh, that's obviously you know. Yeah, that's either a Muslim or a guy in tech support. But he's okay. actually Russian. He, he's actually from Russia. I mean, does he, he have, an, he, he does he have an one of the IRS agents calling up to uh, tell you about you know, your your? Are you coming? There's a cocker in an MMA fight. <laughs> Do not insult my honor. <laughs> like, oh, all right, Dalsim, calm it down. Calm it down now. <laughs> did anybody even get that joke? Come on, Street I Fighter. didn't. I didn't, but it sounded funny. Yeah, yeah. Dalsim was the was the guy with the stretchy arms in Street Fighter. You know, oh yeah, the bald, yeah. Dude, the bald dude, the bald Indian dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so, I, way, you, know, you know what I would love to do. I, I'd love to do a YouTube series or something and like take boxing back to its roots and yeah. actually just like go to the travel the country and pit amateurs in just like a sweaty ring inside of a like a like a like a gym. Get that old like just, just like get get some people sitting on some wooden chairs, get like that single light hanging above the ring. Yeah. You know, just to, like don't make it about the show. Make it about the fight, you know, and just get yeah, these two guys in there and do old school, old school pugilism and just do like yeah. a whole series of fights around the country in like these dirty, sweaty gyms that most people just kind of practice in or they train in, you know, no big grand halls and cameras and beautiful women and all that stuff. Fuck all that. Give me fight club. Give me yeah, pugilism yeah. the way it was in like the 1920s in the days of like James Braddock, you know, mm. Cinderella man, you yeah. know, and Max Bayer, 
You know, give me those fights, man. I want to see that shit again. Raging. I go Bull. one step further. Bring back the Coliseum, dude. Bring it back. <laughs> Peter's gonna shit themselves when when we let the lions and the wolves go, and you get you give people battle axes and broadswords. It'd be fucking awesome. Are you not <laughs> entertained? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's crazy. Now, what was you gonna say, Landon? No, it's already been said, so no worries. Oh, okay. I think you were gonna compare our dick sizes, wouldn't you? And I do. You know, always trying um, to I'm, I'm, I'm one up me. I'm I'm Should trying I? to think outside the box when it comes to YouTube. Like I'm trying to be more entertainment and and I I, I want other yeah. people to start thinking like that. You know, like creating yeah. something people maybe want to see. You know, yeah. that's more in the entertainment realm and not none of that. Like, look at what YouTube promotes these days. These like makeup channels and these yeah these like little garbage clips from like Saturday Night Live and shit. And it's like. What the fuck is going on? Like, where's all the really good original shit that isn't tainted by politics? And know? everybody wants to do drama. Everybody wants to argue and fight. Why don't we just get along and, and have some fun with it? You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm so sick of this drama shit, man. Now, don't get me wrong. I ain't got no problem with you know people doing podcasts. That seems to be the no, direction. Not, yeah, you I know. Like, uh -huh. A lot more yeah. live streams are happening now than than regular content, yeah. but. You still got to think outside the box, you know. You gotta, you gotta bring entertainment, you know. Speaking I just wish. Of, go ahead. Oh, I just wish the apocalypse hadn't happened because that created a void. And when there's a when there's a lack of resources, people turn on each other and fight. Yeah, you know? or like yeah, or like go prehistoric on your ass, man. Uh, okay, here's another British woman dies after a Brazilian butt lift surgery. Oh, yeah. A report I read by that the article. Oh, did you? A report by the BBC found that a second British woman, British person has died after undergoing what is known as a Brazilian butt lift procedure. The death of British woman Leah Cambridge, who underwent the procedure in Turkey in August, sparked a warning from the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons. Yeah, this well, that, that was her first mistake is going to get plastic surgery in Turkey. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah, it's like uh it's like uh I got a cousin who wants to go to Mexico because the surgery's a lot cheaper and have that gastric bypass because she's a big girl, and I'm like, You're gonna die. Dude. I mean one of the yeah. problems, of course, is there's complications. Um you're going to either have to keep going back there to try to get stuff fixed or you'll have to get pay somebody else to go and yeah, and even the best surgeries have complications, right? That's just yeah the way it works. Yeah, of course. If that's you know. if that's the same article I read, um, it stated that there's a one in three thousand, essentially a ratio for like deaths per you know how many times they do this surgery. Mm -hmm. One in three thousand is still pretty damn scary. Well, I mean, when it comes to like yeah surgical practices, I mean, we're pretty good at a lot of surgeries, but that's one specific totally unnecessary surgery that could very quickly end your life. Uh, fuck yeah, that, and dude. And, it, and it's all about like, you know, looking like Kim Kardashian. Who gives a fuck, really? Seriously. Um, I mean, you, you, butt surgeries. It's, uh, just be happy with what you got, for fuck's sake. Or, I just want whoever, whoever dies from a, a result of this surgery, I think they need to have like inscribed on their tombstone. I got the butt of my dreams and it cost me everything. <laughs> You know, something like that. The butt has to be included in that I, little fucking script. Yeah, I, I went to, to Turkey. <laughs> I, I went to Turkey, and all I got was this deadly ass lift. <laughs> <laughs> this ass was to die for. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are those are both way better than my suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> We're better than you, Dave. Uh, of course. But uh, um, yeah, that's I, love how Penn, I love how Penn and Teller got like a, a a fucking tombstone already for when they die. Yeah, and they put um they put a card in in the tombstone, like embedded in the fucking tombstone. Uh, and uh, so, like, you can you can literally do a card trick, and if you're good at shuffling the cards and counting the cards, you you make sure that whoever picks the card picks the card that's embedded in the tombstone. And so when they choose the car, be like, okay, memorize that card. Don't show it to me. But you know they already picked the one. And then you take them to the cemetery. 
and then go, is that your card? Wow. <laughs> and their card is embedded in the fucking t- in the tombstone. Like they set it up for future magicians. That's pretty cool. Man, speaking that's of Penn Teller, me and Teller, me and D's actually had dinner with Penn and Teller. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Yeah, we went to a, what was it a pasta con a few years back, and uh, we was VIP. We went to the VIP thing, and one of the perks was was to sit down and have dinner with those guys, and they were fucking nice. They were very friendly people, very cool. It was great to have a conversation with Teller because I, ne- you know, never heard him talk, and then when I sat down and started talking to him, he was really cool. So yeah, 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 yeah for sure. I mean, I, I've always liked Penn and Teller, even though I don't agree with them completely 100 percent politically yeah. but that's that's not important to me you know like no. people people should disagree politically but still get along that's what's wrong with yeah. the world and, you right also, and you also can separate art from the person you know yeah that too. I, don't, I, mean, I don't even think they're entirely wrong about everything that they've ever said like their show bullshit i think oh, that yeah, was the I love title bullshit. of it like there were like episodes said, where i was like dude i could i could tell you how you're wrong in so many different ways on this but uh, there's other episodes where it's like, yeah, you fucking nailed that subject. Like you, you yeah, you, you, it's wow. yeah. I'm like, I'm like 80 percent with Penn. You know, like yeah, there's some fine. things he talks about that are just a little too utopian, a little too hardcore libertarian, where yeah. it's just not possible to live in that world. As as wonderful as it would be to live in a perfect paradise, it's just not going to fucking happen. Yeah. You know, human nature and all that stuff, but. Oh, yeah. Other than that, he's got a good head on his shoulders, and he definitely and they're entertaining as fuck too. <laughs> yeah, and he definitely hates the the complete like censorship coming from the left in comedy. They are just yeah. like deplatformed. Like comedians don't work the college circuit anymore. They just nope. don't. You know, everybody they gets can. too fucking offended. Yeah, <clears throat> they. I mean, like uh, Joe Rogan. You know, he he. I heard him say one thing. He said, "There's no way he would ever." Even if a college offered him to do, he wouldn't do it because it's just yeah. too much bullshit. There, there's a documentary out that uh, I watched on Amazon Prime for free called uh, "Can We Take a Joke?" Oh, really? That's, that, has, that. Yeah, that has uh, that has interviews with Penn Jillette. It has interviews with Gilbert Godfrey and Lisa Lapinelli and like all these comedians, and they're talking about just that. They're talking about like the history of comedy and how like Lenny Bruce did oh, so much man. to kind of fight the censorship coming from the government and now yeah. it's the left that's doing it. And it I just know, right? really, you know, it just really angers them. You know, um, it, it's a really great documentary. If you want to learn exactly what's going on on college oh, campuses. And what's the name of it again? Can we take a joke? Can we take a job? Definitely going to look that up. Watch it. Did you say that was on Netflix? Uh, Amazon. No, Prime. it's on Amazon on Prime. Amazon. Yeah. All right. It's, it's I, free I, on Amazon Prime. I yeah. take it. The punchline was no. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they talk about some serious shit. I mean they go through the history with Lenny Bruce and all that stuff, but they also show some stuff that's happened in the modern. Like this one guy who isn't even a comedian; he's a sociology. He was like a sociology uh, student. Decided to put on like a really offensive play that makes fun of everybody uh-huh. to see yeah. if 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 he could get away with if you can make fun of everybody, would it be okay? And so it had like. Jesus Christ and it's and and Jesus said like the word cunt 69 times in the fucking <laughs> play and there's all these like really offensive songs about like Muhammad and like lesbians I mean he makes fun of everybody in this play as a social experiment and the fucking college sh- shut it down because yeah and students, because students would go to it and purposely stand up and, and just scream I'm offended I'm offended I'm offended over and over again the, the police had to be fucking called it's like so seriously, funny. like the these fucking idiots were jumping up on the stage and yanking the microphone out of the actors' hands and stuff. Oh, uh, I know, man. They do shit like that, and it's like you you don't have that right. <laughs> you just leave, you know, you want to speak, fine. Let them speak too, motherfucker. Goddamn, shut up. How, and how many how many years has this this been going on? Is something I've been thinking about because I, I haven't really put a timeline on it myself, but. I, I consider this to be just a phase. I think it's like it's any other bad in the last pan- ten years. It's yeah, really well, we've bad. had we've had moral panics in the past, just about yeah. different things, and it was different people being reactionary and and you know super loud about it. But we, like we have grown out of these things in the past, so I, I don't think that it's like the, the game pen- is over. You know. Well, yeah, obviously the pendulum always swings the other way, but it just depends on timing. I mean, you got to look that that. Yeah documentary that i just told you guys about was actually from like 2015 
or 2016. Like it's not even that new. I, I thought it would was a newer one, but it was almost like it was already predicting kind of what was already going to going to keep happening, you know. But this has honestly been happening since the 60s. Oh, it's been yeah, building it since the 60s. Yeah, but I just think it's gotten so ridiculous. The, well, I would say probably the last 10 years, it's gotten extremely stupid. Yeah. Because they used you know, to, I mean, there's, it's always been, like you said, it's been since the 60s, but people could go to colleges and speak and comedy events and stuff, but now they can't do that because you, they're offended. Like you said, I'm offended. I'm offended. It's, it's just so, and like there was, I was watching this so one video a couple of weeks ago. And there was these, and look, I don't agree. I'm not, a, everybody knows I'm not a Trump fan, but there was these uh, MAGA guys out there, right? They had this sign, Make America Great Again. Well, these fucking far lefty little students ran over and stole their banner, ripped the banner off the, the, the table, stole the flag, and ran the fuck off. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then when the cops got them, they were shocked that the cops made them give the banner back. Yeah, they were like, no, oh, they. <laughs> And it, it's getting to a ridiculous level to the point of like they're not even protesting um, like any particular actual political ideology. They're just protesting. They're just protesting America, period. Like there was that school that put up a bunch of little flags in the ground to honor uh, to honor for Memorial Day to honor the dead soldiers of the past. Yeah. And they put up these little American flags and these students were coming by and just kicking the flags over and fucking and stuff like it's like, what, what, what are you even protesting? Yeah, I mean, if you want to buy a flag and destroy it, that's fine, but don't go destroy other people's property. Right, you know, yeah. it, it, things like that are happening. Look, look what look what happened. What was it yesterday? That video that came out. Did you guys see that video? That dude who like roundhouse kicked a girl in the yes, face. Yes, I did see that. I did see that. The I saw that. that. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, and it's yeah, so he, funny how he like walked it back right after, dude. Like he yeah. kicked her in the fucking face and her phone fell to the ground. But you can hear him on the microphone going, you know, she was all like, oh my God. And some other girl was like, call the police. And he was like, I meant to kick your phone. Like he knew he was in trouble. Yeah. Like he thought <laughs> he could get away with it. Yeah, I'm not that good at martial arts. I was just trying to be cool. <laughs> Somebody posted a tweet that he uh, posted was saying that, you know, he wasn't, uh, he meant to kick the girl's phone. You're making too big a deal about it, stuff like that. And I'm like, you fucking, you attacked that girl. You kicked yeah. her in the face. And it was all because she um, was pro life. Pro life, yeah. Yeah, you know, and and it's not like she got up in his face or anything. He she calmly walked up to him, was all like, just calmly disagreeing with him, like, "Why are you here? Like, this is a pro life rally. Like, you know, this is murder." And he just he just had no argument, so he just turned and kicked her in the fucking face. Yeah, a little <laughs> like, feminist roundhouse. Right? You know, <laughs> now he did get fired from his job. He's a hairdresser. Mm, yeah, and I guess the the hairdresser fired him. You know, whatever barber shop he worked for, because they were like everybody should have the right to speak on political issues, and they took a good stance on it and they fired him. But why isn't he arrested? So yeah, why I, did they why did they fire him? Was he out there promoting their salon or something? Or no, it? no, no, they fired him for kicking a girl in the fucking face. Like yeah. they didn't want him okay. working there. I would imagine <laughs> I mean, she has to press charges or something, right, for them to like. Be like, okay, yeah. fine, we'll get off our ass and do something about it. I yeah, yeah, the police didn't show up or arrest him right away, but I bet I, I swear yeah. to God, she better sue his fucking ass. You gotta understand that she really, I mean, I watched it, she wasn't doing anything to this guy. She was just talking to him and he just kicked her. So I mean, yep. it whether you agree with his stance or her stance about abortion, it really doesn't matter. He kicked her. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the the bike lock guy. The bike lock oh, yeah. bandit. I don't know what the what his real moniker is, but like he fucking smashed a dude's skull with a bike lock who was being conciliatory. Like he was trying to break up a fight. He was like in a totally defensive, like vulnerable scenario. And this dude just didn't didn't give a fuck. He just wanted to do something violent. Um, yeah. Like there's no argument. There's no real logic behind it. There's no principle involved. It's just violence. Stupid violence. Somebody in the chat room yeah. said she was recording him. She can't press charges because her Christian views force her to turn the other cheek. No, oh, that's bullshit. Yeah, that's bullshit. No. <laughs> People misunderstand that from the Bible anyway. Turn the other cheek is a term uh, back in the day that literally meant 
fuck off. Like yeah. showing your enemy your ass by turning the other cheek was yeah, an the insult. Was, you know, it the wasn't was like I'm peaceful. Right. Jesus was not that peaceful. He walked in the fucking temple and tossed motherfuckers out of it and threw the fucking table over and shit. <laughs> yeah, and didn't he also say he's like, I've come to divide your family and your friends, and I've come to with a fucking sword and all this shit. Like there's some Jesus yeah. was pretty hardcore in some but, of his but but yeah, shit. but to that one point, but see, back in the day, that was the sign of ultimate disrespect if you turn your back on someone that you yeah. were having uh, having like a debate or argument with, you turned your back on them, that was like you they didn't matter to you. Now yeah. it's but it's stupid. That's see, changed, it's become very yeah. simple, it's become the middle finger. Now, see, Magog, he knows what I'm saying. He's he's a southern boy from uh you turn your back on a goddamn southern boy, we're gonna punch you in the back of the head. <laughs> see, I want to get back to people biting their thumbs. I bite my thumb at you, sir. And, you know, that was like a Shakespearean thing. <laughs> yeah. I think so. That was like 15th century insult. <laughs> that was some really well, old. There's also, there's also the thing where you take it and you do that. That's another really bad thing yeah. in Italian. Or we'll just go 90s and friends and just, what, what you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> um, or you could just piss on their foot. Yep. Yeah, that also that would, in friends. That would probably piss them off. You, yeah, know, them you, off. Know, you know I don't like you when I shoot you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that would be a sign. That would be a sign that you may not dislike someone. That's you know, a joke, don't everybody. Don't don't fucking. Oh my God, Magog's no. a violent extremist. No, I'm not. No. Only yes, he is. He's a, he's a very violent man. He supports bullets to heads. <laughs> I, do. I fucking do. I don't give I, a shit. Man, I'm so, sorry. Some of this political stuff, man, it gets me fucking riled up, man. I got to oh, take a break man. from social media sometimes because I'm just like, man, these leftists, they're so fucking lucky. That there and is it, a lot more tolerance than they think there is on the right, because I swear to God, they're, they 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 just like to piss off a hundred million gun owners that grow their food. I don't yeah. know what's wrong with the left. <laughs> like I don't I don't get it. Now, when I say well, left, of course, I mean the extreme left. I yeah, mean, extreme. Left. I mean extreme. Yeah, and and both sides got extreme stupidity. Like me personally, when I say I don't like guns, I don't say I don't want. I don't. I'm not saying I want to take guns out of your hand. I'm saying personally, I'm not a gun guy. I'm not saying take guns out. I don't want to take guns away from people. I just personally don't want a gun. And no. that, I said that one night on on stream. I was like, I don't want a gun. And they were like, Oh, you're a fucking anti. Trying to take my second amendment right away. I, did you hear anything I said? No, no, no. I you never hear that from me, and I love guns. But at the same time, you're uh, you might as well just get a shirt that says I'm a potential victim. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, I, I'm, I'm a goddamn Superman. Bullets bounce off me. <laughs> it's just they can just get absorbed by the fat. Yeah, by the fat lusciousness. You're like you're like a walking human. Uh, what was it? That fucking ballistics gel. That's what. You <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm pretty fucking lucky. I've never lived a single day in my life where I ever was in a position where I needed a gun. Um, and the <laughs> same thing, the same thing actually goes for seat belts too. I've never, I've never been in a car accident. So like, I don't, I don't know how to rationalize this like fear for well, my own yeah, safety and shit. It. <laughs> it's not, it's not that think of guns. Like here, here's how most gu gun owners think of guns. Okay. It's like guns are like condoms. Better to have it, not need it, than to need it, not have it. I've also never used one of those either. <laughs> and that's why you. he has a lot of AIDS-infested babies. You're you're one of those. But you got to understand, man, like I'm a big fan of guns and I like to announce it. And there's multiple reasons for that. Um, I'm getting pretty big on YouTube. and uh, But that comes at a cost. I'm starting to get a lot of people who don't like me. If a motherfucker ever showed up to my house who like found out who I really was and showed up to my house as some crazy fucking extremist, uh, I'd blow them away. And I want them to know that I would blow them away. <laughs> but, you know, I don't advocate for people to have guns by mandatory law or something. Uh, I'm, I'm like Pimp Muck here. Like, you can own a gun or not own a gun. I don't give a shit. Most yeah. of what I say is jokes. When I when I said Pimp yeah. Monk is a potential victim, that was just a joke. Yeah. You know, where he lives, he probably ain't got to worry about it. Where you live, you probably ain't got to worry about it. But, boy, I tell you, man, they fucking come in handy. Plus, I'm a shootist. It's my hobby. Dude, I love I skeet. Like shooting. Shooting, skeets. shooting skeet is my shit. Give yeah, me a fucking shotgun, shooting, dude. Target shooting, yeah. I love fucking... 
you know, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Yeah. I just, I don't understand these people who, who don't want us to have guns because they don't like guns. I don't get I that. Just, I just feel like if Kim Jong-un is allowed to have a nuke, I should also be allowed to have one. Well, you yeah, should. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think, no, nobody, <laughs> nobody, uh, nobody is advocating for that uh, at all. <laughs> I just, I really do sincerely want my own nuclear weapon, though. That would be fucking cool. <laughs> Like, what are you going to do? I've got a fucking nuke. <laughs> you know? You're weird, yeah, but Fuck what you do with it. <laughs> like, I got this shit on my cell phone. I dial this fucking number and we're all dead. All of us. <laughs> this this no motherfucker one, over here, he's like, I don't even wear, I don't have any reason to have a seatbelt or a gun, but I want a nuclear warhead. Hey, I'm fickle like that, man. Well, uh, Brandon, I've got an article. Well, not a little, not an article, but a little piece here, right up your alley. Uh, astronomers report evidence for first known exomoon. I'm sure you've heard of this, right? Yeah, but there's. I mean, we're we're finding more and more, you know, planets around other stars, and uh, they now have a a a, a planet where they see uh, the 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 wobble due to the planet and and the, uh, the the shadow it casts suggesting that this planet has a, a moon that's close enough and big enough that they may be able to detect it but i mean we suspected that planets around other stars would have moons i mean yeah why not but it's nice to actually uh be able to uh, detect it so yeah Oh, by the way, my guy, I don't know if you know know about Landon. Landon, this is what he does for a living. He's an astronomer. He's a also a mathematician, a computer. He's all kinds of shit. And, uh, he, but he's also, he holds how many world records for the math uh, prime numbers? Well, I've had, I've, I, don't, I don't hold it now, but I've had, it, had yeah. eight. Eight, eight world, world records. records for creating the largest mathematical prime numbers. He don't and do math. He creates it. And yeah, affiliations with yeah, the Illuminati. And, don't forget yeah, that shit. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's all exactly. impressive and everything, but do you own a nuke? Uh, no, but I know how to build them. Ah. <laughs> Fuck, I know how to build <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to say you own a gun, another thing you can make a gun, right? It's yeah. it's not it's not hard to build it. It's the parts. That's the hard part. Well, you need some people. Uh, I don't know. I know there's, there's there's some pretty good 3D printing processes now that can allow you. No, to I'm talking nukes. about nukes. It's not like you can go oh, down to the corner well, drugstore yeah, and I get mean, some plutonium, I, you know. <laughs> um, well, or the uranium enrichment. I mean, you could do that too, uh, sort of. But it's kind of it's kind of obvious when you're when you're doing that sort of thing. Like the astronaut I mean, farmer made his own jet fuel on a farm. It's like you fucking dangerous motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I I don't I don't advocate the the production of of, of nukes unless you know what you're doing. Um, and and most people don't. And besides, the other problem is that you then have to test them. And and we Gun, kind of, guns are easy, and, though. Like, I mean, you could go to a shooting range and shoot stuff. There isn't a nuke range where you could like test your out your nukes. Yeah, that's not that's not a thing. Yeah, guns are but, easy though. They're very simple moving parts. I mean, that uh, you yeah. can actually here in Arkansas, you don't have to register weapons if you build them yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a but law. Say, you can actually order like an AR-15, but make sure that it's an eighty percent build. So you can order uh, an almost complete gun, and then if you drill a few of the holes yourself, they 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 send you a plan to do it all yourself. You ain't got to register it; it doesn't have a number or anything. Yep. Yeah, but it's, it's it's really it's really too bad that that people aren't civilized because you know if if people were actually respectful, then you could have a much deeper discussion about. You know, and nuclear devices, but you can't. So there's there's always some jerks out there that won't um, won't play by civilized rules. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. I could build one, I'd blow everybody up. I'll be honest with you. But I'm I'm pretty sure you can build one with some duct tape and some oil. <laughs> but yeah. you know, I know you're people who worry about the nukes. It's the biologists that I worry about. Ah, oh, like, yeah, people, chemical warfare. People, yeah, well, biological, biological chemical war. warfare is is yeah. is worse than nukes in in, in many ways. Absolutely, yes. because nukes are kind of like a they're like a battle axe, whereas biological chemical weapons are like a scalpel, right? Yeah, exactly. Like you can and have a surgical attack with like like just recently because of all the Kavanaugh news, the entire news cycle has just been taken up by the whole Kavanaugh situation. Yeah. 
that mainstream media isn't even reporting on the fact that some crazy motherfucker sent rice and laced mm -hmm. envelopes to fucking General Mattis and, and a naval admiral and Ted yeah. Cruz. Like yeah. they they tried to fucking poison members of the fucking Pentagon. Like yeah. are that's not in the fucking mainstream news. Why aren't people talking about crazy Wait, they, motherfuckers they sending came, rice they came and after Ted Cruz? Yeah. yeah. I like I have to be perfectly honest. If that dude died from from ricin, I would probably be they, cool cool with it. I'd be like, all right, one <laughs> down, one man down. No, so many other dick. fucking uh -huh. theocratic fucking assholes to go. You know, yeah, we we well we we understand you uh, what side of the political <laughs> spectrum you now lie on. Oh no, I just, <laughs> well, I, no, just I, I, I I just don't I, like I just don't like Ted Cruz. He's a fucking smarmy douchebag. Well, I mean, it's one thing I say. I think I think that you say that you you don't like what he does in politics. Uh, mm -hmm. Now there, I mean, there are there are a few people in, that are that are dead that I think the best thing they did for this planet is to <laughs> die. Right? That, that's probably and that's kind of sad. I mean, um, yeah. and no, I, I, was, I will, right? <laughs> I mean, good thing he's I, probably I, it's, dead. It's, it's, it's very well known. <laughs> that I appreciate the fact that Strom Thurmond remains dead, right? <laughs> and that's a man, that's a, that's a, that was an evil man. The best thing he did for this planet was to go away. And it's not to do with his, what part it is, because he was actually for, at one point a hardcore Democrat uh, before flipping over. But, but he, was a, he was a disgusting human being. And the fact that he remains dead is, is a really good thing. Um, that where where does this vitriolic hatred for Ted Cruz come from? I don't know. I mean, I think, well, I didn't think that Ted Cruz has a shtick to upset people. I think that's part of his... his... Is it just the way he looks? Because his face is very punchable. I'll, I'll give you that. It is, he that doesn't is look definitely much. a factor. That is definitely a factor. He's like got for some reason, on. he's just got a punchable face. But, I mean, I've heard yeah, him I talk. I've heard him speak. I've heard him on podcasts and stuff. Everything from, you know... Crowder to, you know, radio shows and stuff. And I, I honestly, I mean, I honestly don't get why people hate him that much. I don't agree with him all the time, but I don't sit there and think he should yeah. fucking die. Like, I don't I, think I, we I should don't, be assassinating I people. I'm just I, saying, dog, I'm throwing I, I, that I, out there. I, I don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's Ted, I don't like what some things he's done, but again, I think Ted Cruz political machine tries to get people riled up and that's part of their 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 deal. Yeah. there there are there are politicians whose shtick is you know, love me i'm i'm such a nice person and there's other people that try to endear hatred of the op from the opposition in order to invigorate their own it's a, it's a it's not a comedy but it's a shtick that they do yeah i'm sorry the the moment the moment that i really decided that i just i could not be bothered with that asshole anymore is the whole uh shutting down the government over obamacare thing for like however like 50 fucking times like over 50 times you guys you're gonna try to repeal this shit and you're gonna come over here and cross your arms and act like a petulant fucking child knowing that nothing's gonna happen and you're just gonna fuck over you know like millions of fucking people by shutting the government down it's like, dude, you are you are your foot. You're a fucking child. You're just a child. Yeah. Go home. Now, on, on the other hand, I have got to get him that he was one of the very few people in the Republican convention who did not get up and go rah rah Trump. He didn't like Trump. He didn't think Trump was a good nominee, and he wasn't going to endorse him, and he didn't. And I and and he knew that he was going into a bunch of Trump delegates. Doing that, and he and he <coughs> stuck his ground. But but that's part of I think it's part of, of Ted Cruz's shtick is mm. is getting the opposition upset. And I think what Cruz was doing calculated was not oh I'm standing up because I don't like Trump. It's he's not Trump, and so he's going to put himself out as the opposition so that when Trump is no longer there because he either fails to win or he gets terminated out. Then Cruz can try to come in and say, "Hey, how about me instead? I was anti-Trump." Because mm. typically, did, a president, no matter him, how <laughs> popular they are, um, when when they're gone because you know, they're let's say terminated out, um, the the people that come after it want to distance themselves. And so Cruz, I believe, is really trying to say, "I'm not Trump. I'm distancing myself from Trump," so that when Trump is no longer 
the head guy consider me for that position. Okay. Well, I think he's a weasel, but I think uh, most politicians are weasels. But it yeah, that, 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 was, that was a long way of saying he's a weasel. But 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 that's but that's sort of you. You are a politician. You have a product you're promoting. But I, 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 I do I do understand what life is saying, though. I mean, I I there's politicians on the other side, in my opinion, yeah. that I you know kind of sometimes feel the same. Like Maxine Waters, I just yep. can't wait till she has a heart attack. <laughs> I'm with you. Like, I'm 100 percent with you. you know? Like, so I get it. I just I have black, never heard. Right? I have never personally heard anything Ted Cruz has said or done that I think is is worth that kind of vitriolic hate. Um, but at the same time, I do understand the feeling behind it because there's other politicians yeah. I feel that for. So I get. Well, it. Let me let me say this about D though. This is something you don't know about this young man that I know. He is the most contrarian little fuck in the world, right? <laughs> He'll say shit just to get that reaction. Like, why would you want to kill him? And he's over there masturbating because he had a, he got a reaction. He, in, in, he, all, in all truth, that like pimp's right. Like I'm a, I'm a huge contrarian, and and maybe I shouldn't be so hyperbolic. Uh, I don't really want Ted Cruz to die from rice and poisoning. That was hyperbole. Yeah, of course. But I do want him to go away because much much like Maxine Waters, he's just poisoning the fucking well um, in a lot of different ways. Um, like Maxine Waters, the thing I, I saw about her recently that was really bad is she was like straight up sort of like championing the idea of, of hounding uh, politicians or like different political figures in public and like harassing their family and shit. Oh, yeah. That's you one know, of the main like, reasons I was mm. like, fuck this broad. Like, she's it's out like, in public literally going, if you see a member of the Trump administration, if you see a member of the Republican Party out in public, make a scene, fucking protest them. And then you're starting to, you, you start to get things like what happened with Ted Cruz and his wife just out for dinner. And they had to be fucking ushered out the back door of that fucking restaurant yeah. because people decided yeah. to fucking start fucking yelling at him and shit in fucking public. It's like... They're even going after like Kavanaugh's daughters. Like that's fucking See, terrible. I, yeah, I think dude. that's the problem is that that even if you say, "Well, I don't like that politician," what you're doing is creating a climate where anyone can be a victim of someone disagreeing with them. Right? It's one thing to say, "I don't want to vote for name politician." It's another thing mm -hmm. to say, "I'm going to create a scene anytime someone associated with that politician shows up in public." Right. And, and that's, that's a big problem I see in, 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 even in the local level where what people think of having a town hall meeting where you say, I want to hear from a constituents, is, turns into a, a, a turd fest, right? That's yeah. yep. where people believe that it's, you know, being uncivil is somehow a, a, a way to advance di discourse. And it's, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, in, my, in my opinion, it's, it's the lack of testosterone. <laughs> there's just or, no i'm serious we need more real just real men you know, i agree like, oh, you, know, you know it's been 115 years since we've had a president with a full beard yeah we need a there's manly wrong. we need a I manly agree. i say this shit out with a beard. hey now hey now what about a woman with a beard well that'll I'm work okay with that too yeah All that'll right. work yeah. people get People's pissed off like that right but I think we need more manly men in this fucking world. And people get like, oh, Pib, you old school, uh, toxic masculinity. Fuck that. We need more manly men in this fucking world. We got all these little pussy ass twinks running around, running the fucking world. And that's why everybody's so goddamn sensitive and get their feelings hurt at the drop of a fucking hat. Like, like there was a guy, one of these like smaller YouTube channels. So I'm not going to do a response because I don't like punching down all that much. But yeah. one of these like smaller YouTube channels, he's got this guy with like 390 subs or whatever, uh, did a response to my latest video, the one with Medusa in it, the one about the feminist stripper. And he was trying to like respond to me and uh, try to be like an insult comedian, but from like his leftist, like crazy male feminist point of view, yeah. it was so cringy. I was like, I said something in the video and it cuts to him and he's like, well, it seems like Magog wouldn't know internal misogyny if it bit him in the ass. And I'm like, <laughs> oh God, oh, this is bad. Like, oh my God, like, dude, fucking grow some nut hair already. Wow. Jesus exactly. Christ. <laughs> like, now, see, I'm feeling you on this. Oh, I'm glad I got you because most of the time people disagree. I'm so mean. 
we're, we're simpatico here. But I'm, give, I'm, just giving, I'm giving you the time, pimp, because because normally I would just just totally disagree with you for the sake of pissing you off right now, but I'm I'm not gonna. Yeah, you do I'll it all it. the time. But fuck you in the ear. Yeah, I mean, fuck I, you in the ear. <laughs> but you, my guy, you should know that that guy over there is known as the Joseph Mangala of fish tanks. Yeah, I have no this idea. This guy, what he he, well, D confess. Yeah, confess well, okay, so. Did. So Joseph Mengele, if you're not familiar with that person in history, is a guy that experimented uh, basically pseudoscience on uh, Auschwitz fucking prisoners. I know and who Mengele is, yeah. Right, so so basically that extrapolates onto me and my fish tank in that I just had a basically Auschwitz fish tank where I let things die, and I was not good at taking care of them. So I get endless shit for, for my treatment of my aquatic life. And that's I, I think it's a good thing that you killed the fish. You know, it was better that they died. Otherwise, they would have lived in endless, you know, misery. Fish don't you know? have long lives anyway, so fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's I'm not just, true. I'm just, just <laughs> making sure, you know, we're, we understand the levels of stuff when he's talking about Ted Cruz, you know. Yeah. We have to bring up his fish tank because no, Ted I, Cruz I, would I, respond. <laughs> man, I, I Ted Cruz was a fish. I completely understand this young man and his contrary... Uh, point of view of the world that's he's a bitch understandable but i you know i stand by every day i stand by my statement that we just need more real men in this world like that's why i that's why i have three our country guys. we used to have presidents who would get in duels on the white house lawn and blow each other yeah. away like where's those days yeah <laughs> like let's get the let's break out the flintlock pistols god damn it you know? yeah. I'm kind of with you at that point. Like, if presidents knew, like, at some point they could potentially have to duel somebody tomorrow, maybe we would get some shit done, you know? Like, I'm not advocating for political violence, but where's the I fucking, am. like, real man leaders? I mean, I think that's why a lot of people voted for Trump. I don't consider him a manly man, but people saw him as some sort of, like, throwing the wrench in the normal system that we're all tired of. And he just came across as the right amount of asshole. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's maybe that's what we need to kind of take a break from things for a while. It's just some guy who's going to be like, I don't care about you. You're fucking moron. You're fake news. I'm great. And everybody looks at him going, yeah, he's a real life troll. This is awesome. <laughs> and, 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 and Trump. Trump was like an unintentional genius, I think. Like, I don't think he's a stable genius or whatever he says he is. I think he was an unintentional genius and that he's he said so many different things. Some things you'll vehemently disagree with and some things you're like kind of surprised that he actually said. Um, yeah. And he's given enough of like a spectrum of things that you can hold on to that people can just project whatever they want him to be. Yeah. And and, and that that's just who he is to them. What They're Trump did, though. This, you know? Yeah, what Trump did though, he he kind of took a card out of Obama's deck. But what he did, he's he aimed at the the backwoods white boy, poor white guy who felt disenfranchised, felt like there was nobody fighting for him. Trump oh, stood yeah. up and said, "I'm going to fight for you," and uh, and and that it worked. It, well, that's, it, that's now, the, it, the crazy thing is, I don't see how they relate because Trump's always been a rich person, and he but he somehow re connected to the poor white guy. Well, that, you know, well, he, for once we had a politician, I don't want to call him a politician, but for once we had somebody running for president and it, for the first time in a very long time that actually had kind of a positive message for middle, a middle and South, you know, uh, the middle America and South and the Rust Belt, mm. you know, we're, which is, we're great. This country's fucking great. The DNC, their, their political strategy for years has just been, America's fucking racist. We have to fix it or America's fucking bigoted or these problems and this problems. And they just, they come off as these really pretentious, <laughs> highly educated, stick their nose up at the, at the poor farmer. And people were fucking sick of it. The democratic party used to be the party for the common working man. They used to be the party for unions and the teamsters. And now they're the party of America sucks. And nobody likes to hear that message. Nobody likes it because we think our country's fucking great. No matter how many problems we have, we think our fucking country's great. It'd be nice to hear our politicians fucking talk about good things now and again. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, we're fucking I great. Am. We're amazing. Vote for me. We're going to make it even better. And he and everybody's surprised he won. Seriously. Well, yeah, especially consider yeah. the consider the campaign that Hillary ran. She's like, it's a, I'm with her. Break break the glass ceiling. Um, stronger together. Like all of these fucking platitudes that mean absolutely nothing. Trump was yeah, the yeah. only one that was saying, "Hey, we're going to make America awesome." That yeah, one, Hillary and, never said that. <laughs> yeah, and and then she turns around and goes like the basket of deplorables. Like half of America are deplorable human beings, and then she loses, and everybody's like, "It's because of misogyny." No, yep. it's because she's a dirt bag. Yeah, <laughs> like who insulted literally half the fucking country. Yeah. That is not how the, the, that kind of like just attack the enemy and call him sexist and Nazi and stuff. That's just not working anymore. That's been the Clinton like ever since Bill. He he ran the same campaign, just attack the opponent. You know. Yeah, yeah but Bill um, was a better politician though. He was. Don't get me he, wrong. I mean, Bill was smooth. Now, I, I, Bill, I call him Slick Willie. He was he was cool as hell. Now he was just one of those guys that related to people like like Obama did. Like and yeah, like he was a personality. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I mean, and yeah. So, yeah. He Very charismatic guy. You ain't got to tell me about the Clintons. I grew up in Arkansas. Yeah, you Arkansas boy. So yeah, you get it. And I can tell I, you this: as, as slick as he was, and how much people liked him, and all this and that, we in Arkansas still knew what the Clintons were. Yeah. Hell, that's why we voted for him. We figured if he was president, he wouldn't be in our state anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, I, though. I, go ahead. I'm going to go in and disagree with you on, on, on the Trump thing. I think that Trump is a product of television. And I think that, that Trump capitalized on his, his, his television stick. You know, mm -hmm. he, his, his, um, the thing that he was able to effectively do was to, um, to, to, to be inconsistent and proud of it. That's sort of the, that's, that's a, one I of have no idea what things. that means. By, I mean, by, I, I, by the fact, by the fact that he can say something and then deny it and then call, well, that's fake, right? Was, was sort of his, his thing that he was really good at doing because for him, it's the message. I mean, he's an entertainer, right? And it's the message, not the, 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 the backroom reality that is, it used to be this, that, for example, um, you know, if, 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 you, if you said something and then it was shown, you said it, People might fess up with it or or try to, but but in the case of Trump, the thing that he was very good at doing and very good at doing now is essentially refocusing the agenda on what he wants. Right? He he's again he started off his life as a business person and an entertainer, mm -hmm. and and understands how to play to the audience. And if it means being inconsistent. He'll do that. If it means being entertaining, he'll do that. He does what is necessary in order to reach his audience to market his stuff. <clears throat> okay, I get yeah, you. he's marketed his name as a brand since the '80s. Yeah, but yes. I don't think that's the reason he won. I think the reason he won is because there was one person over here who didn't give a fuck what the mainstream media was saying about him, and then there's the other person over there calling the fucking yeah. country a shithole. Who are you going to vote for? Like I. <laughs> People now, don't even you know, watch I, TV anymore. Trump I, is I will, Trump is a product of social media. Yeah, and 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 part of that's again that's part of the the entertainment set. Now I will say that those people that don't like Trump, um, if that's indeed what you 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 dislike, then you know get your rear in gear, vote and become involved. Right. The, yeah. but our, I, but the I, other I, fact I, is that is that that Trump was able to motivate <coughs> his base to vote. Right. And, like, and but, but, in, but I, I judge people by their actions, too. I mean, I didn't like Trump at first, but it's been a year and a half, and I'm looking at the statistics, like the actual factual statistics of our country, and I'm seeing he's doing a lot better job than I thought. He, I thought he'd be a lame duck president, wouldn't get anything done. Fucking unemployment's down. Fucking jobs have come back. I mean, by almost every measurable metric ec economically, he's a money president. We needed a money president. For a long time, we've needed a money president. I don't give a shit what he says on Twitter. Things are doing pretty fucking good, and you can tell by the media cycle. They're yeah. not talking about bombings and terrible shit all the time. They're talking about Trump. 
that's when you know the country's doing good. When CNN has nothing to report on but mansplaining, we're doing pretty fucking good. Yeah, but they're not when's reporting the on things that actually. <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not reporting on things that that actually matter though like they're like pulling out like unemployment numbers that's great i mean sure that's great but it doesn't matter if they're low paying jobs it doesn't matter if uh, you know over 50 percent of the american people are making thirty thousand dollars a year or less in fact one third of americans make fifteen thousand dollars a year or less so like you can say like oh well, these companies are doing so great and the stock market is booming that doesn't reflect like what actual americans are going through yeah but so like they're are selling stuff, it really good I'd rather have a low paying 30,000 a year job than no job at all mooching off the fucking government. Yeah, but essentially what he did what, was he's like, here? <laughs> my, my, point, my, my point is that he sells this tax plan because I think that's really the worst thing that he's done so far. He sells this tax plan as if like it's going to make all these things better. He throws out all the statistics you just mentioned. Look at all this, how great it is. But at the end of the day, he's given a huge corporate tax cut to all of these uh, corporations. <laughs> they have bought their own stocks back not given anything back to their employees that made them successful in the first place. Meanwhile, those yeah. people are, are, they're still poor. You know, he hasn't really changed um, those Americans lives. He's made the rich happy. Um, I, I, you know, I just don't see it. I mean, maybe it's anecdotal because like my mother who's worked for Walmart for 21 fucking years for the past eight years, she's never gotten a Christmas bonus. Yeah. This year she's getting a $1,500 Christmas bonus. For the first time in eight fucking years. And that's that's nothing, though. And that's because one, Walmart's one time, saving a shit ton of money and is finally bringing back some of the fucking employee benefits. Yeah, but a like, one time I know it's anecdotal, but it's just not what I'm seeing. My brother came to me and showed me his check. He's like, look how much fucking money I just yeah. I just got on no. my check. Like, I mean, I, what the fuck I, is I, going I on here? I don't think that, for example, first of all, the, 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 the Republican tax credit, if you're going to give it, if you, if you like the Republican tax credit for some reason, um, you need to give it, you know, credit to the, the particularly the key members of the Senate and House that that, that performed it. Um, mm -hmm. The second thing is that, you know, if, if if on the other hand you you work in a state where there are as reasonable levels of services, you're getting killed in in this this, this tax thing because of the fact that one of the things they've done is they've limited the ability for you to deduct state taxes. It used to be that the taxes you, you, you paid to your state could be fully deducted um, on the federal. That's, not, that's one of the things that they killed. And so a lot of people that are in a state where there's, there's, you know, there's good state services are going to, to, to really feel it and are gonna see tax increases um, there. The other thing that, that I think that, that Trump has done that's really poor is he doesn't understand trade. It doesn't understand um, the trade wars are going to be something that's going to re that are really going to be hitting um, uh, middle America. The the effects of those trade wars are are fairly significant. You know, yeah. he, the, the the guy that he picked up, you know, the, the Amazon book guy who says trade deficits are bad, doesn't understand what trade actually is, and. And again, I, I think this show shows that, that Trump's more about the entertainment rather than the actual message. I, I just um, yeah, we're gonna have it. to we're gonna have to wrap this up, guys, because uh, uh, I'm leaving early today, so we got six minutes uh, before we leave. So I was gonna give the chat enough time to ask a few questions. If anybody wants to ask a question, ask, ask it, and we shall answer it. If it's not 100 autistic, great conversation, guys. And I hate to end it early, but I do got to uh, leave a half an hour early today. So, uh, no, nah, man, you got to you got to stay full time, man. You're working overtime yeah. today. We got to talk about Trump. <laughs> yeah, you get to talk about politics. No, everybody wants to don't, don't want to shut up. But I have to shut you up. <laughs> I have That's to shut you, you up today. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, I do appreciate you guys coming on, man. It was a great fucking show. As always, having you on, oh my God, it's fucking fun. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, even and though I hope we, I hope we proved that even though we, you know, disagree on certain things or we're, yeah, we're 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 seeing things from different point of views. Yeah. This is the way debate should be. Exactly. It's a discussion. You know, yeah. you know? Night, like. Even if we yeah. walk away from this and you guys haven't convinced me to, you know, think of, you know, think of Trump in a different light yeah. and I haven't convinced you to think of Trump in a different light. You know, yeah. we see things by based on our perceptions. I live in a part of the country. Arkansas is very poor. 
And so yeah. what I'm seeing is very positive uptick where I live. Um, it might be different where you live. and But what matters is this is what real political discussion should be. Yeah. Not yeah. And, and, and the fact, you know, we, I say, you know, Dee and I have been, been trying to convince Pimp Monk that the word we is actually quite acceptable in society. No, it's and, not. Uh, <laughs> it's a stupid goddamn thing to say. Which, is, by the way, that, that's D. That's one of D's thing. He's he's the master yeah. of the we. You know, I just feel like you got to go we sometimes. You got to go we, man. Uh, you got to just you enjoy the know, ride. We means piss. It does not. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess or, it, it or, or, or yes in French. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> no, but what uh, you were saying, like, I, I do think that, like, because I understand we, we were sort of, like, going back and forth from different perspectives there. But I have complete confidence that if we just sat down and rapped for a couple hours, like, you know, we would find that we agree on a lot more than we actually disagree uh, on. You yeah, know, I think that's I think that's how most people are. But a lot of other people get way too emotional about it and. Yeah, yeah they start flinging mud and yeah, calling people names because that's the breakdown of political discourse these days. Is people go, that guy disagrees with me, Nazi. That is not healthy. Exactly. Exactly. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have a, a nice discourse and you walk away happy. It's the way it should be. Um, you know, we're not. Yeah, it's it's fucking stupid to argue and scream at each other and shit. Because that does to me when you start screaming at me. I'm just going to double down on my opinion then. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to change anybody's mind. No, you know? you're not going to change my fucking mind then. If you start yelling at me, I'm like, fuck you. I'm going to make it worse for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, it, it is nice to sometimes talk to people who don't agree with you. Yeah, so oh, you absolutely. can get, like, if you, you know, like, like if you guys have different statistics than I'm reading or, or seeing different points of views, I'm a reasonable fucking guy if you're reasonable with me. And yeah, that's I don't what think political anyone discourse got should be. here. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. I don't have no ill will towards anybody, and even the chats agreeing. They're all sitting there going, "Yeah, that this was this is this is a good example of like a public square." You know, yeah. is what uh, shrimp sushi but, says. You know, that's that's fucking retarded. should be. You know, the chats retarded because they haven't tipped me yet. So that's what they don't take them. Yeah, you're not gonna get that thirty five dollars. Just yeah, know it. Happen. It's not gonna happen, man. <laughs> a small fucking stream go thirty five dollars. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna have to go suck a dick at a truck stop now. Yeah, well, it's a normal uh, Thursday for you. It is. Well, actually, I do it on Wednesdays usually, but <laughs> Thursday anyway, I go somewhere else. How, how do we end this with questions or you know? That's what we're have? waiting. On. We got a, just a few, uh, just a couple of minutes because I'm sorry I had to end it today, guys. But I have a lot to do, and uh, as soon as I, and it seems like every time I come on your show, you always end it early. Every fucking show I've been on, it's discrimination, dude. He's discriminating yes. against wizards or uh, some shit. I don't like wizards. Yes. Just, I guess that's what it is. He's I'm sorry. You'll conquer him. Yes. Yep. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not at all ever going to come on your show again because you're just going to end it early. Well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we should just have our own show where we talk shit about Pimp Monk being discriminatory. That's, lot, I, that, that's actually happened though. A lot of people's head shows where they talk shit about me. Um, do you think the problem uh, <laughs> with no more men in office also applies to WWE? What the fuck are you talking about? We got a we got a professional wrestler fan here, and uh, I'm a pro wrestler. That's weird. I don't I don't I don't watch it any. I haven't watched it since I was a teenager, so I don't know what he's talking about. But if if even wrestling is affected by this like beta mentality, I'm I'm sad for wrestling. Well, yeah, <laughs> it is kind of sad. Uh, Luna says wizards wizards matter or some shit like that. Uh, hashtag Me Too wizards. Raisin uh, Girl wanted to say that she loved my stream with my streams with Undoomed last week. Uh, thank you for watching. Yes, always love talk to Undoomed, man. We talk for hours. That dude's fucking audio quality is on goddamn point. That dude's a yeah. master. Yeah, he is. His well, sultry, he, he sexy ass fucking voice. He literally edits film for a living, so you yeah. know, you he's a professional for sure. A, pro a professional. A I wish I could sound like 10% as good as he does. It's it's amazing. Yeah, we've become fast friends to the point where we even talk offline and just talk for like six hours. <laughs> you know, like, I just, I, you, me and him got a lot in common. We love talking movies and 
science and you know just whatever the topic turns into you know mm-hmm. that's cool yeah i definitely follow undoomed wherever he goes that's for sure i like to you catch these to, so you fall into the store yeah dude i'm like at in the store i don't actually <laughs> there's anyway. just some dude there in a suit with no face just <laughs> I, I promise you, though, McGog, next time you come on the show, we'll do a full show. I promise you that. Uh, yeah, we'll have a full sure. two hours. <laughs> <laughs> you but, say that uh, now, pimp. You say that now. Yeah, you wait. <laughs> Just wait. But thank you guys for joining. Thank you guys for watching, liking, sharing, all that good shit. Make sure you check in tomorrow. That's Fan Friday show. We've got, uh, I know we've got Raisin Girl, Luna. Um, I forgot who Gage is going to be on, and I think I'm getting Holberger on. So, oh, dear. good uh, shit. Yeah. Fan I'll Friday. Love Holberger. Holberger's all right. But, anyways, guys, thank you all. We'll see you later. <laughs>